Hello everyone, my name is Leila and I'm so excited to present an article that focuses on an illuminating figure in the art world, Asbia Siri. Published on June 20th, 2021 by the Museum of Modern Art in New York, Asbia Siri, when modern art, when modern Arab form meets politics is by Fatin Mustafa Kanafani. Mustafa Kanafani is a lecturer and art historian whose research focuses on 20th century Egyptian modernism. She has published in journals such as Mada Masr, Al Ahram, and Rawi. Mustafa Kanafani has contributed with a chapter to the first catalogue raisonné for a Middle Eastern artist, Egyptian modernist painter Mahmoud Said. She also founded Art Talks. Egypt, a Cairo-based interdisciplinary art space dedicated to the management of Egyptian artists' estates geared towards individuals and institutions committed to the acquisition of 20th century modern Egyptian artists and the field of Egyptian art history. She recently also published her book, book pictured here titled Modern Art in Egypt. Mustafa Kanafani, opens the article by distinguishing a defining factor in the canon of Egyptian art history, that women have been consistently championed unlike their Western contemporaries and have not only been present, but on equal footing with their male counterparts since 1921, when the first Salon du Car took place. Mustafa Kanafani states that because of these factors, which are championing women in the arts and an equal footing with their male contemporaries, it resulted in a local industry of empowered women artists during the latter half of the 20th century that through their art defined conventions, pioneered art movements, fought for the advancement of women's rights and spoke on behalf of a nation. Spanning a career over seven decades, Siri um, is described as having one of the most influential careers in 20th century Arab modern art. But as dynamic and varied and celebrated as she is, she is understudied and perhaps to some degree underappreciated. And so who is this phenomenal figure that Mustafa Kanafani describes as the national godmother to an entire nation? Born in 1925 and raised by her widowed mother and divorced grandmother, Siri was adamant to confront gender equality through her artwork at a time when animated debates around the woman question were at its height in Egypt. The first painting Mustafa Kanafani analyzes is titled Women's Liberation, Tahrir al-Mara in 1949 and tackles this subject head on. Siri's 1949 painting is presented as a rejection of the inherited traditions that hold women back. From the center to the right-hand side are three nude red figures tugging on a static camel that is transporting three women who in comparison to the aforementioned are fully clothed. The carriage transporting the clothed women is reminiscent of the ancient pyramids, symbolizing the tombs of ancient Egypt. A male figure struggles to remove a boulder to free the pathway for the three women trying to move the camel. What can easily be misconstrued for a forest in the background are in fact people in the shape of trees. Arms outstretched and portrayed as if they're swaying from a gust of wind, Mustafa Kanafani says the figure's outstretched hands represent them seeking salvation. What I found interesting with this painting is that even the rocks have a figural shape to them and that Siri blurs the distinction between natural forms and the human figure, or she plays with the line between nature, where nature starts and where the human figure ends. In Siri's 1953 painting titled Al Al Zaushatan, the two wives, Siri confronts the subject of polygamy head on. We see a young woman seated at the center of the painting, staring out at the viewer. She is the newest wife, breastfeeding her newborn son, while her husband looks over her shoulder. Not far behind the couple is the first wife, who is partially obstructed by her husband and second wife. 
The first wife is depicted seated and emotional over the situation and presumably her place in the family. Her daughters provide comfort to her and feel guilty for her misfortune. Something that I took away from this painting was that it's possible that Siri is also portraying a cycle or foreshadowing a possible future, not only for the two young girls in the background, but perhaps for the newborn baby and the, um, and the ideas that society projects onto both of them. In the next two paintings, Siri delves deeper into the effects of gender preference. Her 1953 painting titled Um Antar depicts a mother's favoritism toward her son and the ramifications it has on her daughter and on the family dynamic. Similar to Um Antar, Siri's 1952 painting titled Um Ratva also delves into favoritism and explores the perks of daughterhood's associated domestic lifestyle of seclusion, which is emphasized by the mother's body language and possibly the inclusion of a household space in the background. Mustafa Kanafani makes a fascinating statement expressing that Siri drew upon the sacred light of ancient Egyptian temples lush and opulent colors found in Coptic textiles and geometric shapes throughout Islamic art. In contrast to paintings previously discussed, Siri's 1952 painting titled Um Saber is not only different in subject, but in composition. Instead of intricate patterns defined by bold colors, Um Saber is arranged in large monochromatic blocks of color. Siri painted this as a tribute to Fatma, who was also known as Um Sabar, a peasant woman who sacrificed herself in 1951 to defy British occupation over the country. Um Sabar is depicted as wearing a gallabille and staring out directly at the viewer and leaning backwards. Three men struggle to keep her from falling to the floor while on the left-hand side, a young boy, possibly her son, raises his arms in a bit to gain his mother's attention. Figures in the background are faintly depicted and meant to represent the colonial army. The main figures are reminiscent of ancient Egyptian paintings with the lack of linear perspective that gets, gives the painting a sense of flatness. Painted in the same year as Um Sabar, Song of the Revolution has an entirely different message. Painted as an homage to the revolution of July 23rd, 1952, and the upheaval of the Egyptian monarchy, the colors used to depict the two fashionably dressed women are evocative of the old monarchy and the new liberation flags that symbolize the rite of passage. The woman standing, the woman standing is stylized after the symbol of the revolution, the ancient Egyptian god Horus, who was associated with the falcon. Um, Mustafa Kanafani notes, even her hand is bird-like, further reinforcing the idea that the figure symbolizes the ancient god. The sheet music is partially obstructed, and all but one word is legible, nasheed, which translates to chant or anthem. From polygamy to gender roles and equality, occupation and the infringement of civil rights, to the new political era, both its promises and its setbacks, Asbi Asiri casts a wide net of topics to confront head on through her artwork. Fantine Mustafa Kanafani succeeds at introducing newcomers, myself included, to series of beyond the context of how she has often been defined, which is usually by her use of vibrant colors and instead dives into themes Siri articulates through her brushstrokes and how they continue to serve as expressions of political activism today. For more information on Siri, I've included a couple of links for you to go through at a later time. Thank you for your time, everyone. I hope you enjoyed learning about Razbiya Siri. Thank you to Afikra and Nisreen for coaching me through this process and have a great Saturday. Cheers.